Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our message today is the Gospel reading which was read just a few minutes ago. You may be seated. Our Gospel reading for today, it invites us into the Palace of Memories where Herod is plagued by a memory of his extraordinary sin. Now, before we get started, you need to know a little bit about Herod. The Herod in our text for today is Herod Antipas, the son of Herod the Great. Herod the Great ruled during the time that our Lord was born, and he supervised the massacre of the infants. Herod Antipas is his son, and he came to power just shortly after that incident and ruled clear through the life of our Lord and up and through our Lord's crucifixion. Now this second Herod, Herod Antipas, was a man who took delight in extraordinary things. He liked listening to John the Baptist, a very powerful and extraordinary prophet who had visions of the future. King Herod, he had ambitions of being a true king, and yet that was something that he would never ultimately inherit in his life. Herod delighted in hosting extraordinary banquets to celebrate his birthday and having Herodias' daughter dance publicly before him and his guests. And he took pride in extraordinary promises which he could never keep. You see, the promise that he made to Herodias' daughter was that he would give up to half of his kingdom to this young girl. And yet, since Herod was not truly a king, he had no kingdom to give. All the same, Herod made extraordinary promises, and as we read in the text, he was faithful to his word. Because of his promise... He had John the Baptist beheaded and the prophet's head delivered to Herodias' daughter on a platter. Herod delighted in extraordinary things, in extraordinary pleasure, in extraordinary ambition, and in extraordinary promises. But all of these extraordinary things, they also filled his life with a haunting sorrow. You see, because when the truly extraordinary actually did happen, when Jesus arrived on the scene and started casting out demons, the palace of Herod's memory was filled with a very troubling spirit of his extraordinary sin. Now looking back at Herod, he is a very easy person for most of us to despise. His sin in beheading the prophet John the Baptist is so extraordinary that it makes most of our sins look small and minor and even not really worth mentioning. And yet God's Word is very, very clear. All sin is worthy of damnation in His sight. You and I, we may not live in great palaces or give great banquets or even make outlandish promises. But just like Herod, we can be troubled by memories of our sin. You know, sin, it has a way of entering into the most humble of homes, into the most holy of environments, and then turning them into places of torment. You and I, we can suffer not because of beheading a prophet, but because we can remember one extraordinary little sin. Each of our sins, no matter how small they may be from our perspective, they still stand in defiance to God's Word. As our Lord explains on the Sermon of the Mount, just a little bit of anger directed toward your neighbors is a violation of God's command not to murder. 
A lustful glance as you drive down the street is a violation of God's command not to commit adultery. And while we may come to church here on Sunday and listen to God's Word and even do it joyfully, when we fail to respond to that Word, when we fail to actually put God's Word into practice and action and live according to His holy will, then we too silence the prophets. Our sin makes this world a very troubled place. Our sin haunts the halls of our memory as we recall that one moment of weakness, that one word that cannot be taken back, that one night so long ago that we lost our purity, that one day we lost our temper. And then, in our sin, we tremble before a holy and righteous God. And yet, we don't despair either. Because in our Gospel reading for today, St. Mark, he also offers us a glimpse of an even more remarkable and extraordinary story. You'll notice how in our Gospel reading, St. Mark, he sets the past sin of Herod in the present ministry of Jesus. Herod hears of what's happening in the name of Jesus, and with that one small reference, Mark leads us into something as big as the salvation of the whole world. St. Mark, he surrounds the story of Herod's extraordinary sin with an even greater story of God's extraordinary love. Jesus has sent his disciples out to proclaim his word and to cast out demons. Jesus called his disciples for this very purpose, and now they are entering the world with God's life-giving word. And while Herod stands transfixed by his troubled memories, Jesus is transforming the world with his extraordinary love. Jesus, he enters into the troubled places of our world, and he challenges us with a call to repentance. He changes us with the proclamation of salvation. And then he transforms us by his life, death, and resurrection. He transforms us into people who remember God's mercy and rejoice in his love. And you know, although Herod so many years ago, he missed the extraordinary work of God in Jesus. You and I, we don't. Regardless of what sin you brought into church this morning, you have come into a place of God's life-changing love. There is no sin. There is no sin that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so today, Jesus, he continues the ministry he started 2,000 years ago. And he does it among us here today. Through his word, he calls us. He calls each and every one of us to repentance. No sin is too small for God to notice. And all of our sin is worthy of damnation. And so we stand before a holy and righteous God, troubled by the memories of our sin. And yet in that troubled place, Jesus enters into our lives. He bears the punishment of God's wrath for our sin. And then he dies and rises again to bring us new life. You know, while Herod feared that John the Baptist, whom he had killed, had risen from the dead, we rejoice that God raised the one whom you and I had crucified. And through him, 
Through Jesus, God brings us new life. In Jesus, we see the wonder of God's mercy and the very extraordinary nature of His love. God the Father sends His only begotten Son for our salvation. God the Son, He willingly endures eternal punishment for our sin and then rises to bring us new life. And then God the Holy Spirit, He works through the Word to turn us from our sin and bring us to faith in Jesus Christ. And all of this, this is a memory of God's extraordinary mercy and love. This is a memory that we will never forget. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.